Hello guys and welcome to this uh, third episode of Micro Tricks. Um, I've been kind of inactive recently. I started this uh, series of tricks uh, with two videos and I didn't do any other because I'm a pretty lazy person. Uh, but uh, now I'm back with, I think it's gonna be quite a long video. Um, it's an analysis of um, 15 minutes time to micro. I played against B Winner. Um, B Winner being pretty good at time to micro actually because he played a lot of it against um, against me but also against other people. And um, he's been beating a lot of good players in time to micro. Um, so yeah, it's um, it's not a um, it's not a bad opponent or something. So it's an interesting interesting match. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to uh, play this recording of my uh, of my gameplay and pause it from time to time and just uh, talk about the different rounds. Um, of course, time to micro is not quite real micro as in in-game micro because in-game you have some other factors, for example, reinforcements uh, coming from your military buildings and uh, you don't have mirror armies of course and there's for example buildings or trees or whatever blocking so it's of course pretty different from in-game micro but it's not uh, as useless as some people make it uh, sound it like um, it's definitely good training for control groups for uh, APM splitting fire and just like very very intense micro it's not easy at all um, so yeah that's that's it for the short introduction and uh, now we're gonna move on to the to the actual gameplay so um, oh one last thing actually this is a time to micro I made myself from uh, Azam's time to micro the, the original one was from Azam and it was 12 rounds but uh, I changed it to 14 rounds and I removed all the rounds with only one or two kind of units because I, I like it better when there's directly three units and it's a bit more intense micro um, and you can probably download this scenario somewhere on ESOC I guess I uploaded it at some point uh, or you can also leave a comment and I will link you or something anyway there we go now so that's the first round uh, Abus Jan Hus uh, so you have like three Hus, five Abus and ten Jans kind of like an auto mirror uh, looks like I was typing a little bit I hope the quality is gonna be good enough by the way um, so here you see already one thing to mention um, I'm bringing my, my Jand and my Abus at the, kind of at the same level in the line because uh, obviously Abus guns are like um, range infantry so they counter Janissaries but Jans have a lot of HP and uh, you kind of want in this round to focus down the Abus guns of your opponent and uh, I'm talking about the round but it's the same thing in an auto mirror if you're, uh, if you're going Jan Abus mirror for some reason then you, you wanna be sniping Abus guns because they're a very powerful unit but they have low HP so you can kill them quickly but if you don't kill them then they will kill your army so uh, you basically want to bring your Jan in front to try to kill the Abus and your own Abus to kill the Abus and if you have a chance of, uh, to send your Hus on the Abus guns of your opponent of course you should do it as well so um, yeah, here I'm going, I'm clicking directly on his Abus and uh, with my Jans as well and uh, he's counter-attacking and he, he got a good volley on my Abus guns but at this point I already got one more Abus on him because I did a better job at focusing down and um, his Jans are out of positions and not close enough um, they're, they're close to his Abus to be fair but they're not like between the Abus and the Cav I already pulled back my Jans when I saw he was sending the Hus to try to block uh, so at this point I'm not going to be able to use my Abus guns anymore to fight. I'm going to pull them back because it's more important to keep them alive than actually shoot with them. Um, so I'm going to try to just get rid of these Hussars and save my Abus guns and then uh, come back in the fight with them. Uh, and me meanwhile I saw an opportunity here so I just send my, my uh, Hussars on his Abus guns. 
Um, so here I, I'm just gonna go in melee with my Jans in a good positioning, sniping the husk with my Abus as well. Meanwhile, splitting my husks to kill his Abus guns. Uh, here a bit of a mistake, uh, bad passing for my for my uh, husks, but I use my Abus to finish his Abus guns. So now I'm left with uh, two Abus guns and all my Jans. And so there's no way he can win now because Abus are just so good. So I'm just going to hit and run and uh, split fire a bit. Here a bit of overkill, just killing one low HP Jan, uh, but it's just because basically as long as I keep my Abus safe, as long as he can't kill them, I know I win this round because even if he can kill my Jans, I still have two Abus left and they are going to totally shit on Jans basically because they have real lot of attack. So this is... Um, this was the, the, the round one. Uh, I hope I'm not gonna take too long for each round because it might be a very very long video, but whatever. Um, this is the second round where you have 8 crossbows, 10 musketeers and 5 hussars, so kind of a, a French, an old school French mirror. Um, in this round you want to have your crossbows shooting at the musketeers because they have a multiplayer of course. And uh, you want your musketeers to try to get in a position to do some damage in melee uh, to the opponent hussars. But if they can't get in that position because your opponent should always pull back his hussars and not let you melee them, uh, then you want to be shooting at crossbows or musketeers with your own musketeers, basically. And what about your hussars? Well, basically you want them to be tanking all the time the range attacks and attacking the opponent hussars, but you should never let them die uh, to melee mode musketeers. So, again I'm gonna bring all my range infantry in a line because uh, even if crossbows have more range, you uh, might be able to give a good vo volley with your musketeers as well. So you see he's bringing only his uh, crossbows and I get a volley and I have my musketeers already in a position to shoot uh, here a bit of a mistake for me, w not really controlling my, my hussars on this um, on this part of the fight and over committing a bit, having already one low HP hussar, but at least meanwhile I'm getting some good volleys um, on his infantry. And I guess that soon I'm gonna reposition my musketeers to be a bit closer to my cav. Um, so yeah, now pulling low HP has another mistake. This was not actually being targeted uh, because he did a good job at uh, re-tasking his hussars on my high HP hussar and not on the one pulling back. Couple of musketeers here from Bewin are going in. I'm not sure if it's intentional. They could be trying to go in melee mode, but I think they're more like AFK right now. So I think I'm gonna. I, I should. I don't know if I'm gonna do it, but I should be sniping these in priority because they're really close to my cav. So I should be sniping these musketeers with my head crossbows. And meanwhile, bringing my own musketeers to try to uh, get the advantage in the calf fight. Um, I'm not like, well, I'm using my musketeers to snipe his two musketeers because I was uh, too, like, uh, he pulled back his hussar, so I couldn't, in any, any way, couldn't use my musketeers in melee mode, right? So I might as well kill the two musketeers here and meanwhile use my crossbows to shoot at the other ones. Uh, here, he's having the advantage in the calf fight because I have only one or, or two Hus fighting here, so I need to act on this point. I obviously have the upper hand in the infantry, I have uh, more musketeers left, but I need to be careful about my calf here. And um, here I'm sniping more musketeers and bringing more, more calf in, in position. And uh, now pulling them back, pulling the low HP hussars, this time working and bringing my musketeers in a nice position here to actually block his huss. And then you can just attack moves them and they will do melee attack because they're so close. And meanwhile my, my hussars are still attacking, so right here he probably lost the round just because, uh, because of that low HP hussar going back. Uh, he's gonna take a lot of damage here, you see one, two hussars basically dropping because there's a very low HP one. Meanwhile, my crossbow is consistently uh, sniping down the musketeers, that's very important. You can see he didn't really snipe my musketeers so quickly. I, I still have five left, even if two of them are low HP. And that's definitely gonna help in the calf fight. And if I can win the calf fight, then I have hussars left against crossbows. So, well, anyway, at this point, I pretty much won the round. I have so much more stuff left. Um, Again, pulling a low HP house, and now it's just over. There's no houses left, there's nothing to cover his crossbows, and he's just going to delete his army because he knows uh, this round is over. Uh, moving on to the next round, um, the third round, which is um, 
14 crossbows, 5 pikes and 7 uhlans. So kind of a German Mjör here. Um, so uhlans are kind of a um, weird unit to micro because they have such high attack and such low HP that you don't want to move them too much because every second that your uhlans are walking uh, and being attacked by other uhlans for example well, I mean, you, they will just die very quickly. So if, you, if you're just walking with your Uhlans, they're going to die and do nothing. You can't actually tank. With Hussars, you can just walk and tank and, and you know, just micro them. But with Uhlans, you kind of need to sit them and, and that moves them. And maybe pull back only a couple of them. Um, you, you, can't, you can't afford to run all the time with them, basically. And um, you need to be careful because, of course, the pikes are going to, to kill your Uhlans very quickly if you don't pay attention. So... There we go. So just going to poke with crossbows and send my Ulans. Uh, you see he got a, a couple AFK Ulans, so I'm already get, getting a very good uh, engagement there. Was um, a big mistake from Bewina. I already killed one Ulan without losing much myself. And uh, his pikes are also in range of my crossbows while my pikes are not. And I'm going to bring them over there. Uh, you don't want to go straight because then you get sniped directly. You want to go a bit around like this and then bring your pikes in position to be on the same side of your, as your calf. If, if they come on, the, on this side of my crossbows, they're going to be totally useless, so they need to come on top here. Uh, positioning is actually a very important part of micro. Um, so I'm going to pull back a bit my ulans and snipe the pikes meanwhile and then turn back to fight and bring my pikes pull back a couple more ulans to make his spikes inefficient and um, and that's it it's a very quick fight i can't explain everything because yeah ulans have just so much attack but and now at the end of the day you see i got a couple pikes left and more cav and then i, I just win the round because of that and splitting a bit fire but it doesn't matter so much anymore at this point honestly um And yeah, that's it. Not actually very one-sided. I mean, I, I got like five more crossbows left or something. Um, it's snowballing very quickly in Ulan fights, basically. Uh, skirmisher, Musketeer, Queer. So that's a round where you, you need to be very careful with your Queers. You don't want to waste them. And it's actually the same kind of uh, in a real game that... Um, you, you, when, when you go in with your calf, you need to be sure that it's the right time to go and to not like uh, give free volleys and to um, to just get caught by melee musketeers or whatever. So uh, they're very precious. They have a lot of attack, but they actually can die quite fast to a mass of musketeers. So uh, it's going to be a lot of poking with skirmishers as well, trying to snipe some musketeers, but also to poke against opponent skirmisher, baiting with uh, the queers here to bring the musketeers forward. Um, here I was not sure, I was trying to go in and then I changed my mind, so I gave, wa I gave one musketeer, that's not very great. Um, meanwhile, just skirmishers still shooting at each other. Uh, here, giving a volley also, so that's a bad start for me actually. I gave a musketeer, I gave a volley, I also killed a couple of musketeers, but I have one half HP uh, Kriya already, which is kind of big. Uh, but now it looks like he might overcome it with his own Kriyas. And uh, yeah, he also got a, a big volley there, and I see the musketeers coming, so I'm probably gonna task my skirmishers on, on his musketeers. And it's a point where we boss like going to fight. I don't think one of us is gonna try to run away. It's too late now. The squares in the middle already snaring each other. Uh, boss groups of musketeers going forward. So at this point it's about who is gonna get the better positioning. Who is gonna be able to get the queers to be in a good position to attack the skirmishers. Or even, you can even attack the musketeers with your queers. As long as the musketeers are not attacking you in melee mode, you can do damage to them. Um, and your own musketeers should be pretty much in the middle just like attacking whatever they can like queers if they can or else skirmishers or musketeers so i'm going to send my, my musketeers in the middle and i have a better positioning here because my musketeers are chasing away the queers so it means that three of his queers are running and getting shot uh, while two of my queers are in position to attack the infantry and my skirmishers are in a safe spot while his skirmishers are next to my queers so um, this is looking like a good positioning for me. Uh, now I'm going to stop with my musketeers to chase because obviously I can't keep chasing. My musketeers are slower. 
and I'm just going to um, get my musket in position to shoot in his infantry instead. And it's gonna melt quite quickly. He's, uh, he's making a real mistake here of letting these commissions in the queer and uh, I'm doing myself a mistake on the other hand to have my own queer still fighting. This guy should have turned back already and I didn't pay so much attention so he's got two queers attacking one of mine. It's still good for me because it means that he got one more queer than me idle here kind of, not doing so much damage, just attacking my calf but not really attacking the infantry because with queers, uh, because of the area damage you really want to be fighting infantry most of the time. Um, but I'm pretty sure we'll pull it back soon enough. Um, Sniping the infantry. Now I see it. So uh, now I'm just pulling back the squares, sending it again. And all the musketeers melted, and now there's no way he can win that. Um, now I'm going to pull trick my skirmishers together. I, I drag box everything so that they run to the musketeers. And he just stops because I got too much units, uh, too many units left compared to him. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna need one second to close my window. Alright, um, so yeah, so that's uh, right now 4 to 0 I think, uh, and we go on to the round 5 now, and that's a uh, Russian near our 23, that's 10 musketeers and 5 Cossacks. Um, it's true that's being very powerful in this matchup, because, um, well, you got 20 of them and they're just a strong unit, and they kill musketeers quickly but they don't really die so quickly to Cav because they kind of tank, there's so many of them. Um, so you want to, to be able to kill the Cossacks faster with your musketeers and your own Cossacks while sniping your opponent's musketeers as fast as possible. With 23 deaths you can split fire and, and kill more than one musketeer per volley. Um, there was a point where I played more time to micro, sadly at the moment I'm not super active and uh, my micro is not exactly at its top level. So I don't I don't think I was consistently splitting fire with my strelets, but it's something you can do. Like you can totally kill two musketeers with each volley with uh, 20 strelets. So let's go. I'm gonna bring my cab, I, I, I guess, on the same side of my, as, as my musketeers. Um, I actually changing my mind because these Cossacks are engaging on the other side and I need to pull my uh, anti cab and my cab on this side to fight his cab attacking my uh, my streetlets. So I'm going to move my streetlets away and bring my other units in. So, uh, so that my musketeers can already start shooting at, at the cab and uh, now my streets are turning back and gonna shoot at the musketeers, I expect. Uh, so you see, I, I, this was not the greatest split, but it, it's a good start. I killed one musketeer, almost almost two musketeers in one volley. Oh, actually I did kill two. Um, while he killed only one, I believe. So I'm already one musketeer ahead there. And it can snowball very quickly like that. Um, gonna bring probably my musketeers more forward here to help fighting the calf. I keep splitting a bit my, my, my streetlets, kind of failing, but better than nothing. I'm pulling back my Cossacks as soon as these musketeers come in position to attack them. And I'm pulling them back in this super small uh, gap here. Like there's a really small gap between his streetlets and mine and I, I, I tried it. It could have failed, it could have been a big passing issue and just like my calf doing bullshit. But it worked and my calf just ran in this gap away from the musketeers in a really good position to deal damage to the streetlets without being attacked by any kind of melee unit because it's in such a small gap here. Um, and just finishing to snipe his musketeers, you see his Cossacks. While my Cossacks are in a perfect spot to attack his streetlets, his Cossacks are close to my musketeers, uh, having to run around the whole mass of units to do anything basically, and that's just very painful for him. Um, and, and here I get them even in a position to kill another Cossack. I'm bringing my strelets even closer to make sure I can finish sniping the, the Musketeers. He's going to send his Cossacks on top, but this is a lot of running. And meanwhile, they don't do any damage while my Cossacks are just attacking all the time. Uh, there was one Musketeer here that I probably didn't see. 
because my Cossacks are attacking it and that's not what you want. You want to be sniping it with your straight edge. That's kind of a mistake, but still okay. Uh, so he did bring his cab. Uh, I turned back my Musketeers and I get in a position to scare his cab away. So basically his Cossacks are just running all the time and never able to do much. And meanwhile he lost most of his straight to my Cossacks and I just have 15 straight left out of 20, which is a lot. Uh, they can probably clean up by themselves this fight. Um, so yeah, it's my, my musketeer just being pulled to kill very quickly is a Cossacks in melee mode and, and he resigns. <coughs> okay, this is a Anila scrub round, 8 crossbows and some gnats. Uh, the Great Plains gnats. Um, so these, the problem is that most people have a diff have a problem to see the difference between these units, but these are hand cab and these are cab archers basically. So you want to be sniping the cab archers with your crossbows because they are like basically dragoons, let's say. So you want to be sniping them and you want to have your cab archers on the cab. But you need to keep your cab archers as far as possible from the fight. Uh, like just sniping cav, but from a good angle so that they don't get sniped down easily by crossbows. And your own cav should be blocking and attacking his cav, not attacking the crossbows. That's a common mistake, but you don't want to be fighting crossbows with these guys. They need to be attacking uh, the other cav. Because if you can kill his cav, and if he kills your crossbow, but you have time to snipe down his Comanches, so the, the Cav Archers, what's gonna happen is that at the end of the day, you, uh, you will be left with no crossbows because he attacks them with his Cav. And uh, you will have Cav left, while his Cav will be dead to your Cav. So he will have crossbows left, you will have Cav left, and then you win the fight because uh, Cav beats crossbows. And that's the same in every single... Um, kind of this co unit compositions, always have your own cav fighting your opponent's cav. Because if you fight his skirmishers, at the end of the day he will have cav left and you will have skirmishers left and he will clean you up. Of course in the real game it kind of depends on which which kind of reinforcements are coming. Sometimes it's fine to attack skirmishers because you know that you have a batch of goons on the way, so even if you lose your cav you can still defend or whatever. But uh, in this kind of scenario you, you, you really need to be keeping your your cab alive at the end to, to kill his crossbows. Um, so at start of course it's just crossbows shooting at each other because they come in range. Uh, you see he's trying to attack my, my crossbows and already almost losing one cab for it. Uh, so that's a mistake. And um, I'm myself doing the mistake of over committing with my cab archers bringing them too much forward and that's not what you want. You want to keep them real alive. They die very quickly to range infantry. Um, but they're gonna sit there at least and do some damage to his cav and uh, his Comanches are kind of out of position at this point they're really they're safe of course but they're way too much in the back so they're not actually doing any damage and it's not really what you want um, so now I'm bringing my crossbows forward you see I really don't care if they're getting attacked by the cav because I know it's fine for me if he makes a mistake to attack my crossbows with cav so I'm really pulling them as much forward as possible to snipe the, the Comanches. Um, and meanwhile my Cav and my Cav are attacking his Cav. And um, here I kind of uh, misclick and uh, I, I get like three Comanches to low HP which is uh, not what you want. Usually there should be at least two of them dead now and then it would be less less attack for these Comanches overall when two of them are dead so that's a bit of a mistake for me but um, still my Comanches are safe in the back here kind of safe and I have more uh, axe riders alive and now I'm gonna probably fix this miss micro and just uh, finish sniping the Comanches down oh one crossbow missed the volley so this one didn't die sadly uh, but next volley he's gonna have no Comanches while I still have one alive and I also have a lot of low HP Cav, so he didn't do the greatest job at, at killing the, the Cav. And, uh, well, it's exactly what I said, I'm gonna be left with Cav against crossbows, basically. Um, so now he, he can just delete his stuff, because there's, like, no way he can win this fight. Um, so... Longbow, Pike, Hussar. Um, another funny 
fight because your longbows can't move. I mean, they they need to sit and shoot basically. And in this round, you can use this uh, trick that I explained in my first video, which is uh, the trick to make your longbows shoot fast. Um, they can have much more attack overall if you use this trick. And I, I think I used it if I remember correctly. Um, so it's gonna be uh, interesting to see that it actually works when you do it uh, in this kind of situation. It, it's the same in game. If you have a few long bows, you can use this trick for sure. Um, and long bows are just so strong. They have so much attack against everything, even against Hassa. So it's kind of about who's gonna have more long bows left at the end. So now uh, we start fighting. I'm using the trick now already. So getting three good volleys in, you can see he already died, uh, lost three longbows, while I don't think I lost three, I lost probably two of them. And um, his pikes are too much in the back. I'm gonna be able to snipe them and to bring my own pikes in a good position to fight the yellow hussars now. Um, pulling back my, my huss so that they don't get too much damage from the pikes. A bit late, but better late than never. And uh, his packs are just running and probably gonna get sniped down. While my packs are actually dealing damage here to uh, to this yellow Hassa. And uh, I'm turning back to fight it because there's not much uh, pikes left. My pack's still doing damage, bringing my calf in to uh, to finish his uh, hussars. And now it's a point where you just let your calf kill his calf, and then you start focusing your long bows uh, on his long bows and to use the trick. <coughs> Sorry. Um, so yeah, now I'm using the trick to have this fast uh, rate of fire. Um, working almost every volley, uh, each volley. Sorry, I mean. So at the end of the day, I just have much more longbows left, and then it's it's really snowballing when I have so many longbows and, and I can actually one shoot his longbows with my longbows and he can't then his longbows are dying much much faster and he's left with nothing and I have like um, 10 longbows left or something. Uh, Skirm has Goon, this is a very classic um, matchup obviously. So you wanna be just uh, shooting at whatever you can with the Skirms. In priority shooting at the Goons but if you can't then you want to be shooting at the yellow skirmishers. And um, the Hussars are supposed to be baiting the goons to come out and then your skirmishers can snipe the goons. Um, and your own dragoons should, again, just like the Comanches a couple rounds ago, they need to be shooting at his calf, but meanwhile staying as far as possible from the battle. You don't want them to be in the battle getting sniped down. So um, let's see how it goes. Uh, here a mistake from me, I attack move my skirmishers when in fact you should be focusing because you see I got like some HP of uh, 4 skirmishers while he killed one of mine. So I'm already kind of one skirmisher behind, which is not what you want, that's a mistake from me. Now I'm focusing so that's better. Um, he's sending his house a bit too much forward considering that my goons are here already probably but that's also a mistake from me especially this one dragon here is out of position it got split uh, by this mass of skirmishers it had to run around it and uh, it's in a position to get killed very easily by the skirmishers so that's another mistake from me actually uh, but at least I get a, a good volley and I kill one husk so I lost a goon for a husk and another husk myself so that's not, that's not a, a good trade for me so I'm quite behind at the start now uh, again, my hussars over committing. This was really not so much well played for me. But now he's sending his huss here and his guns are out of position. And I think I'm gonna be able to get a good angle. With my guns here on top, quite far, uh, able to snipe the hussars. My skirmishers pretty much forward, able to snipe the dragons when they come. And my hussars in position to just block his cav and do some damage. And yeah, I just jam my huss in and block and attack bring my goons in the back here to be able to snipe down these hussars and I'm bringing right now my skirmishers forward to snipe the dragoons. So um, I'm gonna just snipe, focus down the goons one by one. So one goon dying, one goon dying. Meanwhile he's not really sniping my goons so much which is a mistake. Um, 
Here you see a lot of my house dying, but that's okay. Uh, they're just blocking and tanking, basically. And uh, splitting a bit of fire off my dragoons. And keep sniping the, his dragoons. And uh, his coons have been running around my army, so they just, like, uh, died, basically. I mean, they, they, they just didn't do any damage, and they died. And uh, I'm gonna be left with more house and more goons, basically. So, uh, so yeah, I just sniped down his hussars and brought my hussars on top of his commissions because once he doesn't have hussars left himself, I want to directly attack his skirms with my hussars because without hussars left, the most scary unit of yellow is his skirmishers, not the goons. Uh, the skirmishers are stronger in, in, in the skirm goon battle, so you want to be then attacking the skirmishers as soon as possible with your hussars when he doesn't have hussars left himself. And uh, your goons also want to be, by the way, shooting at his skirmishers. And then your skirmishers should be shooting at his dragoons because they have a multiplier. Um, but I, I pretty much stopped microing here because I had so much more stuff. Uh, it didn't really matter anymore, like four houses left. And he just did it his army. So it's a lot of positioning and, and focusing the right units. Stuff like split fire and uh, like advanced micro tricks is not um, the most important. The most important is to have a good positioning and to shoot at the right units. And then you can pretty much have um, at least colonial micro, I would say, if you do this properly. And then on top, like on top of the cake, you want, of course, to be splitting fire and doing nice things like that. So yeah, we're actually saying right now that this uh, game was a mess. I say yeah, I started poorly, and uh, but then you made you did bullshit. Uh, so yeah, it was not the greatest round. We boss micro um, sub suboptimally, but it can happen, of course, out of fourteen rounds sometimes to just not micro very really well. Uh, now I'm giving a free shot on my Spahi, which is not what you want, but it's not a huge deal because, well, they have a lot of HP and it's just 100 less HP. But still, you don't want to be... Uh, you want to bring always your Falconets as forward as possible, have your units close by to just be ready to cover your Falks, but not actually giving free volleys to your opponent, obviously. So I'm bringing my Falks forward, keeping my, my units close, but I didn't react fast enough, sadly, and I gave a free volley. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to lose this round now. Uh, it's pretty much impossible to, to win the round after after you gave a Falk for free, basically. Like, I got only one Falk shooting, so he got two Falks alive, and I have only one. And my my Falk didn't even have time to shoot a second volley, so he has two Falconets alive, and I have none. Uh, at least I'm trying to bring my Jans in contact to the Spahis. And my spy is on top of his falks, but he's doing a good job at covering. And the problem is that the, the spies are kind of bugging because of the area. You see here they're attacking the falconets. Like they're literally on top of the falconets, but not dealing any damage to them. Or, well, they did, but now you see I'm attacking really the falk. And it's just not dying. Uh, so I'm gonna need to bring a couple jans in, in range mode to actually kill this falk. Because it's the only way I found. Uh, and I just lost the round because he got much more jans left. Uh, because his Falcon has been shooting at my Jans all the time, so I have like no Jans. And I, I had to waste my Spahis inside of his Jans because of that bug. And uh, and now, well, yeah, it, it's just, I can't win that. And I'm, I'm saying, yeah, no, I got the bug because he got the same bug like this uh, the game before. And, uh, and he said, yeah, you see, it's real annoying. <laughs> So, uh, Casador running MAMS, this is not a very useful round overall because you don't really get this kind of unit composition in the real game, but it's still funny. Uh, basically, you want to be saving your run-ins, you don't want to waste your run-ins, you want to kill his Casadors, all his Casadors, with your own Casadors and his MAMS, and your MAMS, sorry. And then when he has no Casador left, you can send your run-ins in and they beat anything. Um, you don't want to be facing his mams with your mams because hams have, mams have so much HP it's pretty much useless to attack them here I just shoot at them because it's a free volley so why not 
But as soon as possible, I start attacking the, the Casados. Here, a bit of a mistake, not focusing Casados. Um, so yeah, it's just a big clusterfuck where each player is trying to kill the other player's Casados. Uh, but he sends his runnings a bit forward, they were AFK, so I get a bit of a volley here. And now I decide that I'm going to send my own runnings, even if he got some Casados left, just trying to jam it in and, and finish it. Meanwhile, he's doing the same thing, because yeah, when, you're, when your opponent sends his runnings, then you probably can send yours as well. And um, trying to hit and run with my uh, Casados to kill his runnings, while bringing my runnings in a good position to basically kill everything. Uh, one run in attacking the Casados, that's very important. Casados are very low HP and uh, you can kill them really quickly with run ins. Here, his run ins are attacking one of my mams. It's getting really quickly low HP and you don't want this to happen. Um, so I'm probably gonna pull it back and meanwhile, my Casados are still hit and running and trying to snipe down his run ins. So yeah, I pull back this low HP uh, mam so that his run in is just running. And here he got one running alive, uh, still. Uh, he's not really focusing my Casados, so I'm gonna escape two of them, it's gonna help a bit against this run in here. And meanwhile, I'm bringing three run ins, I still have three run ins alive while he has only one alive, so that's where he's gonna lose the round because I have more run ins left. He can do nothing here with three run ins, these, these mams are gonna just die and do absolutely nothing. And meanwhile, he has only one run-in, and one run-in can definitely be killed by, like, two Casados and three Mams. So, yeah, uh, I'm just, like, running my calf, trying to get as much damage as possible on this run-in without letting him actually attack me. He's uh, smartly pulling one of his Mams to attack my Casados, but at the same time, I'm going to waste his Mams in my run-ins on top. Um, so here I'm pulling back against the low HP man, very interesting, so that he doesn't get any damage in. And slowly his running is dying to my mams. And when he doesn't have this running anymore, uh, it's really over. So he's targeting another mam now, so I'm gonna pull it back. And uh, just gonna kill his running that way. And, and now I'm left with a couple runnings and so many mams that I want around. There's a low HP mams that I'm gonna kill here and his Casados, so yeah. Um, round 11 already, so there's 14 rounds, so that's um, 11, 12, 13, 14. There's four rounds left, including this one. And this is an, an another interesting round where it's it's very complicated to... Um, it's, it's a really hard round, let's say, because Lancers can attack pikes, they do a good damage against pikes, but they also die quite quickly to pikes. So basically you want your lancers to be dealing damage to infantry, so you can attack skirmishers, you can attack pikes, but you don't want to overcome it in the pikes, so you need to pull back the lancers when they get attacked by, by pikemen. And meanwhile your own pikes, it's probably going to be a bit of a clusterfuck because there's so many melee units, so your own pikes might be in contact with his pikes. And then you really don't want your pikes to be attacking his pikes because they do only 8 damage against other pikemen and it's basically like nothing. So you need to be really focusing his lancers with your pikes, that's very important. And meanwhile your skirmishers should be splitting fire to, to snipe down his pikemen. And we'll see how this goes. Um, so poking with skirmishers, having pikes in the back but not so far ready to, to um, come in the fight. Gonna send boss players gonna send the uh, the lancers forward to try and bait the pikemen to come out and defend and maybe attack a bit the skirmishers with the lancers. We'll see how it goes. I'm already pulling back a bit but staying at range. Um, he's bringing his lancers forward but I have my pikes here. He also has his pikes so it's quite even at this point. I did have time to kill one uh, skirmisher with my lancers, which is nice, but sadly I overcommitted a bit and this one lancer here is caught in the pikes and kind of blocked, so I'm gonna need to pull back really quickly. He already pulled back. Um, so yeah, this lancer is gonna take a lot of damage from the pikemen, that's a mistake from me. And meanwhile I'm not controlling my pikes because I kind of panicked that this lancer was getting attacked, so my pikes are just going forward in position to get sniped easily by his skirmishers. 
But at the same time, my skirmishers are sniping his pikemen, so it's not too bad. And I'm, I'm gonna pull my pikes back. And uh, I lost I lost two pikes. He did a good job at splitting at the end, but he also lost quite a lot of pikes. And cover mode is nice, because my skirmishers do much less damage. But in cover mode, pikemen do half the attack, and they are half as uh, fast. So they will die to lancers so as soon as my lancers come in he needs to be really careful to have his uh, pike switching back to uh, me to normal melee mode and then when he goes back to melee mode that's up to me to to pull back my lancers again and just snipe them with my skirmishers so yeah I, as soon as i see the cover mode i just go back in because i know his spikes are not scary when they're in cover mode and uh and i get in a position to to bait his spikes and snipe them while he doesn't really kill any pikemen, here he could have killed some skirmishers with his lancers, but he didn't task them to actually attack, so that was a bit wasted. Uh, I have one lancer still doing damage to his pikemen in, in cover mode, by the way, and my skirmishers still sniping them and bringing my own pikemen to defend now. So, um, you see I'm pulling back this one lancer because I expect him to actually stop being in cover mode. He didn't do it because he, he was a bit slow to react, but you don't want to be staying too much, basically. You you need to be rebaiting his spikes with your lancers all the time and not really commit to a fight. So, uh, yeah, you see, I'm, I'm pulling back again. My lancers attacking his lancers, my own lancers, uh, sorry, my pikemen attacking his lancers, my own lancers just pulling back. His spikes almost in my skirmishers, so a really bad positioning. In cover mode, so I'm gonna bring back my lancers directly to attack, and then he's gonna have to stop the cover mode, which means I'm gonna be able to clean up this like, uh, I don't know, five pikes or something. I'm gonna be able to clean them up really quickly with my lancers plus my skirmishers. While I have eight pikes left myself, and I can probably cover mode them now, and uh, pull them back a bit. And that's what I'm doing, so uh, pulling back the, the lancer getting attacked. Sending back my <coughs> sorry, my pikemen in because uh, I want to be fighting his lancers, but um, my positioning is overall just uh, better here. And um, and you see he has barely, like, just a couple pikes left while I have six of them. And because I have so many pikes left, it means that he's consistently, constantly running around uh, with his lancers without being able to really fight, while my lancers are in fact killing his pikes along with my skirmishers. Um, so yeah, no pikes left for him. I can now send my lancers on his skirmishers, or even on his lancers, doesn't matter so much anymore. Um, my pikemen doing damage, skirmishers being pulled back. His lancers are snared by my lancers and the pikes, so they're just basically running and not doing so much. I send just one cheeky lancer on his skirmishers. I don't want to lose the main fight with uh, against his lancers, because that's the most important. Obviously, if at the end of the day you have lancers left, you're, you're the king, you won the round. So I, I want to really clean up his lancers, but I just send one lancer because I can. Basically, I can afford to send one lancer because I have pikes here. So I just send one to kill his skirmishers, and meanwhile, still gonna clean up on this side. And constantly hit and running with my skirmisher um, to just make sure he doesn't actually uh, kill them with his lancers. And now, well, it's just over. I mean, I, had, I got four lancers left. And a couple pikes in cover mode tanking the skirmishers shots. And um, now uh, another run with Falconets. Hopefully this time I'm not going to fuck up. Um, so again, gonna bring the Falconets forward. You wanna cover them with your with every other unit basically, even your skirmishers if you need them uh, to cover your falks. And. Uh, yeah, let's see what happens now. Okay, so he's bringing his Falks. We both got a good volley in. But I feel like my Falcon had sh uh, shot a bit earlier. I was a bit faster, so I, I might have an advantage there. We, we need to see how it will go for the last volley. Maybe my Falcon had is still alive and his Falcon had is dead because I shoot before him. Uh, he's bringing his Calf to attack my uh, my Falk. So I directly bring my own horses to, to block. And I bring my rods from the back to cover as well. And he's also bringing his rod, so pretty uh, symmetrical here. Uh, we both kind of overcommitting with rods and being very careful with our horses. So 
we bust gonna get our rod sniped down. Uh, he did a good job at splitting here, but so did I, so we bust losing to rod and arrows. And uh, now I'm, I'm pulling back, but I'm losing one more rod, so I'm probably slightly behind right now. Like, I probably have... Yeah, you can see already in the score, it's 24 uh, against 25, so we have the same units, but I have one less rod, so I'm slightly behind. Uh, but now I'm coming in with a better angle to poke. And uh, he's sending his uh, hussars a bit too much forward. So they have to go back because of my rod. He's gonna snipe one rod. But meanwhile, my hussars are actually dealing a lot of damage to his huss and he lost one. And my skirmishers as well targeting the hussars here. So um, I'm ahead in the cav fight. And again, you want to have some cav left at the end. Because if I have cav left and he has skirms left, I'm going to clean up. So here I got four full HP huss by, uh, basically while he has three low HP Huss and um, I'm just turning back to fight it and um, big mistake from him not bringing his rods when you're behind in the calf count you need to bring of course your entire cavalry to make a difference because well if you just fight with like two three Hussars against four obviously well yeah that's what happened they all die and I still have like three or four Hussars left and now he's bringing his rods, but it's too late because now I can just snipe them down and pull back my huss. Uh, he's doing a good job at cover, going in cover mode right when I shoot, but then next volley he's anyway like losing um, probably two rods. Yeah, you see three rods because I'm, I'm, I'm fighting back with my cav as well. And he did snipe my rods meanwhile, but they anyway make uh, no difference because he doesn't have any cav, so my rod and arrows were just like, they didn't matter anymore. What matters now is that I have all my hussars alive, even if one of them is basically dead because it's super low HP. And he doesn't have anything to cover his skirmishers. So yeah, I'm just gonna go in and, and Z move this. And uh, yeah, he say, hmm, I directly say you wasted your house. And then he say, I don't know why my house died so quickly. I say you would have won uh, because I wasted my rods if if he didn't waste his house after. And he say he don't know why his house died so fast and I say uh, there were less of them and they were low HP because yeah he lost one of them and, and then he had three against four and they were low HP. Uh, I say not really low HP but less than mine and then yeah the problem is that he was uh, preparing to fight so let's go. I, I, I lost a lot of HP actually on this crossbow here so it's not really fair but um, well happens. I was typing so uh, now we're gonna start playing this round for real. Crossbow Ulan Dop. Um, Doppels are kind of like just really strong in this matchup because Ulans die very quickly to Dops. And crossbows are not the greatest strange infantry and they also kind of die to dobs if you can bring the dobs close to the crossbows. So you need to be basically very careful with your ulans and your crossbows that they don't run into the doppels while having your own dobs in a good position. So a bit of poking here like every time with range infantry. Bringing my, my ulans to give a little swing here like just a bit of HP from these crossbows it's always good uh, if you can but pulling them back because his dops are coming and now I'm pretty sure I'm going to target his doppels as soon as possible with my crossbows I didn't have time because I, I was already shooting on his crossbows with mine but now I'm pulling back my ulans bringing the dops to just dead move his calves that's a big mistake from the winner he shouldn't be running his calf in my dops and pulling back my bows to be safe in the back shooting in his doppels so yeah, I got some good swings on his calf, so a couple Ulans are already gonna be low HP. And as soon as he's pulling back his calf, I don't I don't follow them because then I would just be running and doing nothing. I directly Z move again to attack his doppels and have my crossbows ready to shoot at his doppels as well. And now I'm gonna bring back my Ulans because I want to bait his dops to attack my Ulans. You see, they attack so they kill one dop, one low HP dop. And I'm going to pull them back very quickly, I'm pretty sure. Uh, because I know that you don't want to let your Ulans get hit by dobs in any 
circumstance. So yeah, I'm directly pulling back. So he stops while walking a bit and doing nothing basically. Meanwhile, they get sniped and killed. So here I'm already up like three drops to two, I think. I have more HP over all my Ulans, I think, because this uh, Ulan here is low HP. And I'm gonna task a couple of doppels because he tried to do the same thing as I did. But you can see his Ulans are kind of AFK, they're not grouped together. And uh, I'm directly turning to get a, a swing on these Ulans. And you can see one Ulan dying. Uh, I'm waiting for the swing of this top for the animation basically to be done. So that he loses some damage and then I'm directly gonna turn back to attack the remaining top. And uh, my crossbows constantly shooting of course. N don't even need to micro them, they're just like shooting all the time at doppels. Gonna bring back my Ulans as well because now there's only a few doppels left so I can definitely afford to fight. Uh, sniping his last top, sending my Ulans to get a couple hits, bringing them back. I want to bring my dops at the same time basically. They're very low HP but still uh, you need to use everything you can use. So even low HP dops in cover mode can tank a little bit and uh, force his Ulans away maybe. Um, going to go back. I'm just like kind of forcing it now. I know it's over. I got one more Ulan. I got a couple dops. I got more crossbows as well I think. And uh, and now one of his Ulans is in the back. That's why you always need to keep your calf close to each other. And uh, and I'm just in a much better position to fight now. And my, my dops are kind of lagging behind but it doesn't really matter. I mean he got one swing in and now he died after two volleys of his crossbows. And yeah, we, I'm left with like four Ulans and all my crossbows and he has nothing left. So I won this round as well. And now that's the last round with heavy cannons. So that's like kind of a Dutch fast industrial with the church card and the heavies. Um, so here you want to be, it's another cannon round where you want to be covering your cannons with your musketeers. But don't go on top of your cannons with musketeers because what happens is that his cannons are going to shoot at your cannons and then there's going to be the area damage around. So if your musketeers are on top of your cannons, they're going to uh, maybe not die, but they're going to lose a lot of HP from the area damage of heavy cannons. Heavy cannons being, of course, a very, very powerful artillery unit. So, um, yeah, I actually don't know why there's six trade yards. Uh, should be five because that's what you get when you have the church card. I probably made a mistake when I... Uh, when I made this scenario. Um, so yeah, and of course if you can, you want to kill his cannons with your calf, but you shouldn't really be able to because there's uh, mus so many musketeers defending. So yeah, cannons just going in position. I'm shooting a bit after him, that's already a disadvantage for me. But I'm pulling my calf. Uh, this is very interesting. I need to, to, to pause and explain this also. I'm not clicking on his cannons or anything. I'm clicking very far away here. Why? Because it's the same for the infantry here. You can see my infantry is moving in a column and my cav is moving in a column. Well, they're trying, they're getting snared, but they're trying to move in a column. So not next to each other like this, but behind each other. And this means that when you switch I, I should probably go back actually um, a little bit to re-explain this. This is very important. I think we're gonna see it right now. At the, the exact point where you pull your calf really far away, they switch from line to column. And that's the point where the one calf going forward in the line, like at the front of the line, is gonna speed up very quickly. So basically it makes your calf faster for like one second or something. Your calf is just running forward really quickly. And you basically get some extra speed by doing this. So here you see where well, I phase the volley. And now you see this point where I click super far away. I, do, I don't click somewhere here like most people would do. That's a mistake. You want to be clicking super far because when you click far, your units go in column and not in line. And you will see right now this guy in front, how fast he's going now. Like they, they're just running so quickly to his cannons that he's not even going to have to gonna gonna have time to properly defend it you see the, the this guy just pulling forward and now they go in a column in, in a line again and uh, when they go in the line again I'm gonna click really far away again to make them speed up again you can see here again speeding up so this couple of radios being really forward not getting blocked and just going to go right on top of his cannons so that's a very important trick and this is something I use 
um, honestly, every single game I play, so it's not just a time to micro trick. I actually want to, um, I, I don't know if I'm going to do it because now I explained it already, but I, I plan on having a micro trick uh, episode on this because it's just so important. And, um, well, anyway, meanwhile, he got his musketeers in a good position to shoot at my cannon, to be fair. But this means that I'm going to shoot at his musketeers with my musketeers. So w what's, what's happening here at the end of the day? I'm going to lose my calf, probably, because he's attacking his calf with, uh, my calf with his calf. So I'm losing HP on my calf, so I'm not going to win the calf fight. But he's going to lose musketeers because they're going to come in range of my musketeers. So at the end of the day, I'm going to probably be left with more musketeers and less cav. And that's a really good trade for me because obviously um, you want to have musketeers left since they beat cav. So yeah, just pulling forward, uh, two stradiots in position to attack the cannons. Uh, could have sniped this low HP cannon earlier. I realize it a bit late, but still. Meanwhile, my cannon has been shooting at his infantry and, uh, and all my musketeers have been killing his musketeers. So yeah, you see how many of his musketeers dying. He even made a mistake, didn't finish my cannon. He's gonna get it now, but another volley coming in, three musketeers dying. Meanwhile, I did lose three stradiots, but I'm escaping them, so I'm buying time basically. While he's losing all his musketeers, I mean a lot of musketeers, I'm just buying time and running my cab away. Uh, carefully running it away, turning around, and now I'm gonna pull them, if I remember correctly. With, together with my infantry so that they don't die and now we are gonna fight again but now I have more musketeers than him and even if I have less trade odds that's just really good for him now the only way for me to lose it is if I waste my musketeer attack on the trade odds if I shoot at range on the trade odds too much then they're gonna tank and I might lose the round so now my job is to bring my musketeers in melee against the stray dots and to target his musketeers at range not shoot at his stray dots as much as I can avoid it and, and send of, I send of course my couple of stray dots to snare his stray dots because then they're gonna be much slower to pull back from my musketeers so even if it's only two stray dots it's not so much for the damage they do it's more for the for the snare and now I'm pulling back again as a column my uh, musket I think it was another column pull like this Let's check. I'm pretty sure they're in the line right now. And I, I pulled them right now forward as a column. So you see again the, the front musketeers are speeding up to be in uh, at the top of the column, at the start of the column, you know. And I'm not going to let them go fully in column formation. I'm just going to cancel it right now, I think. Because, I mean, I don't know if it's what I did, but it's what I should do for sure. Now they're in such a perfect position to attack in mini mode the uh, uh, Bewinner's Stradiots. And now, yeah, I'm just gonna fight and you see instantly one Stradiot dying, the other one being really low HP. And the ones in the back are not able to connect in mini mode, but they still shoot, so it's not the greatest damage output they're doing, but they're still like doing some damage. And um, this is much better than going in mini mode because if you go in mini mode, the other guy is just gonna run away and your musketeers are gonna walk and do nothing. So here, at least, if he pulls back, they're gonna shoot instead of just running. Now he's reacting. Uh, he already lost like two stray dots, so that's good for me. And I lost only a couple of musketeers. And. Uh, Again, I pull them in column, and this time I go mini mode, and uh, and they did a lot of damage. He could have pulled back faster, but he didn't. And then as soon as he pulls back, I go back in range mode. And I'm probably just going to chase his Stradiot with my own Stradiot. I don't want to waste my Musketeers on this guy, I just send my, my Stradiot there. And meanwhile, I'm going to have my Musketeers against his Musketeers. And I think I should have the upper hand because I have more. He has like probably around 15 musketeers and I have 22 so uh, all this is a result of um, the early fight with the cannons and the fact that now I was able to kill his stradiots efficiently without wasting um, my musketeers attack uh, and now it's gonna be some fire some split fire basically I'm gonna have to split fire to kill his musketeers quickly so I'm splitting a bit uh, killing two musketeers uh, 
I kill his Stradiot with my two Stradiots and just splitting, killing two, three much Musketeers each volley with my Musketeers. And meanwhile, my Stradiot's just doing some damage and being annoying and tanking a bit. You see, all these Musketeers here are turned to shoot at this Stradiot, so they're just tanking a lot. And meanwhile, my Musketeers are not getting shot. Um, I don't want to let them die against melee Musketeers, of course, but I just come all the time to bait and tank and be annoying with them, basically. And you see, I still have, I, I'm splitting fire again, uh, bringing my Stradiots a bit too much forward, but they're going to be pulled back any second now. Uh, just tanking so much, you know, again running and again tanking one volley. And now he has like, what? Well, he didn't have 15 Musketeers before, he probably had more, because now he had like, I don't know, uh, 12 Musketeers and I have 18. So again, I have the advantage in the Musketeer count. And... While my Stradiot was dying, I killed another, like, two Musketeers. So this Stradiot did uh, a lot of work they are tanking. And, and now I'm just left with much more Musketeers and I still split. So, um... So he's just gonna lose, basically. And yeah, so that's it for this time to micro. Um, so that's 13 to 1. Uh, Again, Bewinner is, is not bad at time to micro. He didn't micro as good as he can sometimes do. Uh, I microed pretty well, but I can also do slightly better. I did some mistakes that I, I think I point, pointed them uh, out. And I hope it's interesting for you guys when I uh, show my mistakes as well. Uh, because, of course, no one is perfect. And you also learn from your mistakes. You mostly actually learn from your mistakes. So myself, when I'm watching this, I realize that there's some stuff I could be doing better. Um, and uh, yeah, so 13 to 1 is quite one-sided, but um, don't don't think Bewinner is uh, really bad or something. He's a very decent time to micro player, and uh, usually it's a bit closer than that. Like I would win maybe 13, uh, 11 to 3 or 12 to 2 or something. But um, all right, so um, that's it for this video pretty much. Uh, I'm a bit uh, scared of checking after this video how long it was. I think it's uh, for sure a, a big half an hour. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, well, I hope you guys enjoy. And um, if you have any ideas um, of videos you would like to see from me, just feel free to comment, uh, to subscribe, whatever, everything. And, um, yeah, I hope, I hope it was interesting. And... Uh, See you guys.